The City Morgue Iceberg is a topic that I've wanted to cover for quite a long time, but I never have because some of my mutuals also want to make a video on this topic, but seeing as how it's a couple months later and all those plans have pretty much fallen through, I think it's time for me to do it myself. Now me and my team have been working on a huge iceberg with a lot of topics that haven't been covered before, but before I can get that done since it's taking a little bit of extra time, I decided to start a little bit smaller here. I've seen one other City Morgue Iceberg video and there was a little bit of misinformation in that video, so I decided to do my own rendition of it, try to add some information change a couple things that that person got wrong and yeah that's basically what we're doing here so let's look into the city morgue iceberg tier one so tier one mainly consists of all the morgue's main albums with volume one two and three being hell or high water as good as dead and bottom of the barrel and they even have toxic boogaloo and the two solo projects from zillakami and sosmula being 13 songs to die to and dog boy and there's also too high to die that's not included in this iceberg but that's the second sosmula solo album tier two sosmula hate so this refers to the fact that in the city morgue community many fans have an irrational hate for sosmula with many claiming he holds zillakami back his bars are basic his ad libs are distracting and overboard and he's just not a good match for zillakami however i do have to say that i feel like the hate for him has subsided somewhat it seems like it was really bad around the volume 3 era but now people don't seem to mind him as much especially since recently he switched up his rapping style so i think people appreciate him a little bit more for that but he definitely still has some pretty dedicated haters that you can find mostly in the zillakami subreddit missing since thursday is a close clothing brand that's pretty heavily associated with City Morgue. It was originally started by Scumbag Chad, an ex-friend of 6 ix 9 who originally rose to prominence for designing the HIV clothing line that 6 ix 9 would often wear in his early career before he even rapped. But as shocking as it is to see somebody wearing an HIV shirt, nobody really wants to buy that, so eventually he would shift his focus to the Missing Since Thursday line. It's known for creating a variety of clothing, but it's most well known for the crest pants that you can see both Sos Mula and Zillakami wearing early on in their career. They've kind of moved away from that in more recent years, but it was definitely an iconic part of the morgue for a long time. City Morgue is a trio. Now this is apparently confusing to some fans as they consider the third member of City Morgue to be Takashi 6 9 However, that's not true seeing as how when Takashi was still in the picture, the group was known as Scum Squad. This group would eventually break up and the morgue we now know of today didn't come around until six months after that. So if Takashi is not the third member of the morgue, then who is? Well, it's actually their ex-producer Thrax. They actually mentioned on the No Jumper podcast that he was the third member as well as corroborating that by putting it on their Instagram page in the bio once again saying he was the third member of the morgue. And Cameron Nazi even mentioned one time that Thrax was actually signed to Akari Ultra, which is City Morgue's label, meaning he could only produce beats for them. He was the main producer on Volume 1, but as time went on, he got less and less placements on each new album, and eventually it seems like the morgue completely cut him out. As far as we know, there's no bad blood between the members. The only reason they stopped using his beats is because apparently they were just a little bit too extreme and intense for them to rap on, as Zilla mentions in this video here. But I don't use Thrax as much. I think it's because I'm having more success with, remember, I like more like super, it's like, you know, I don't like heavy, heavy, heavy beats. I want to be the heavy one in the beat. Thrax's beats are so like fucking crazy. And like, like they're like amazing. Like you can just listen to the beats by themselves, but I'll have like trouble, like finding my place in the beat because like my voice is heavy too you know what i'm saying but either way it seems like city morgue is a duo at this point and thrax is no longer mentioned when talking about the group cleanup crew so this one's a bit interesting it mostly serves as just kind of the brand slash logo for sos mula he has it tattooed on his back and he's also printed it on several pieces of clothing although i don't think it's a full-on clothing brand because he has his fuck the 2000s clothing brand i think it's more like goth boy click in its early stages where it was just something they put on logos and then he actually has two mixtapes that have the same name one that's just a two-track ep that he released sometime during 2019 and then he has another collab ep that he keeps teasing by the same name but he's been teasing that for years and it's it's never released yet so we're not really sure what's going on with that tier three yokai this is Ilakami's first official track that he raps on alongside his former partner 6 9 he was a ghostwriter before this point but this is the first time he actually does vocals the reason behind this is because Zilakami wrote a two-person verse where each person was supposed to go back to back but 6 9 had nobody to rap alongside of at the time so they decided to put Zilakami on the song instead another interesting fact about this song is that
that it was actually originally supposed to be called Tsunami and have a whole separate cover art, but sometime before release, they ended up changing it to Yokai and giving it this cover art instead. Anti. This was the name used for Zillikami's first solo album pre-release, but eventually he would change it to Dog Boy, and it turns out that Anti actually had a whole different track list where he would remove a couple songs, change a couple beats, and completely tweak it into a whole different album. And even though Dog Boy would eventually drop, some of the tracks off the original Anti playlist have never come out officially, leaving many fans to wonder if Zillikami will ever reuse them on a future album. Be Patient. This is a small three track EP that was released on SoundCloud before volume one of City Morgue officially came out. It was meant to hold fans back until the official release of their first project, but it's still widely loved within the community for being very different from all the rest of their albums. One of the tracks off the project known as Nitro Cell actually got a full on music video on World Star Hip Hop. Unfortunately though, the entire project is never released on Apple Music or Spotify though, because it uses some samples that the Morgue never paid for, leaving it stranded on SoundCloud to this day. Dog Year Skate Club. This is yet another clothing brand that was created by Zillikami. It includes skateboards, it has Zoomy crossovers, and even live skate competitions. Although when checking the website now, it seems like there's no new drops and the Instagram page is pretty dead as well, so maybe the project is completely done at this point. Zilla's Cars. So this one is referring to Zilla's car that can be seen in a couple music videos as well as constant Instagram stories, showing him working on modifying it, with some fans creating jokes online about how Zilla works on his car more often than he actually drops music. SoundCloud era song. So this refers to the fact that City Morgue originally started to drop tracks on SoundCloud before they ever started Spotify or Apple Music. There's over 20 SoundCloud exclusive tracks as well as that previously mentioned EP called Be Patient which is also exclusive to SoundCloud. With many fans not even realizing those songs exist in the first place. But I would say if you're new to the Morgue and you want to start somewhere, I would start with the SoundCloud era stuff because you can really see the evolution of them as well as some varied styles there. And to many fans it's the best music they ever produced because they weren't under the restraints of a label at the time, but if you want to know more about that, definitely check out my video where I rank all the SoundCloud era songs for more information on that. Tier 4, Zilla's Harley. So this is very similar to Zilla's car, it's self-explanatory really. Zilla has a motorcycle he's sometimes seen riding around New York, and there's not much more to it than that, but I guess it's a little bit less known than the car. Zilla still lives with his mom is once again another pretty self-explanatory one, referring to the fact that Zilla Kami moved back in with his mother sometime in 2018. This fact was first revealed in a Cuff Boys interview where his mom actually interviewed Zillikami and he let it slip that he still lived with his mother. Apparently he used to live in Harlem for a little bit of time but he didn't like it so he moved back in with her. And another interesting thing is that 6 9 also mentions that Zillikami lived with him and his mom for an entire summer but Zillikami has never really spoken on this so we don't know if it's true or just something 6 9 said to try to get back at Zilla. Tattoo shop incident refers to a video of Takashi 6 9 attempting to pull up at Zillikami while he was at Sos Mula's tattoo shop. So I'm here Zilla don't want to come outside. That's Zilla right there. He don't want to come outside. Look, yo, Zilla, come outside. No. He don't want to come outside. He locked himself in some type of tattoo shop. In this video, you can see Zilla Kami standing inside, Takashi asking him to come out, and as soon as Zilla walks towards the door, 6 9 ends up turning off the video and cutting it to try to make it look like Zilla was scared. There were also mentions that apparently 6 9 had like 5 or 6 guys outside and were trying to jump Zilla Kami, but we don't really know the true story to this. But despite that, 6 9 was very boastful about it, actually mentioning it on the No Jumper podcast, as well as having a line in his song Taddy, where he says, went to the east side, spanked out Juju, referring to Zilla Kami. Rapper stealing scar tattoos. Now this refers to a small incident where City Morgue actually called out Trippy Red for supposedly stealing their scar tattoo idea and getting it himself. As you see, Trippy Red has a tattoo on his face that says Love Scars, and Zillikami and Sos Mula had an issue with that as they actually got their scar tattoo to try to help out their friend who's very self conscious about having a similar scar on his face. So they both got it to try to make him feel better. But when Trippy Red got the same tattoo, they said he was taking all the meaning out of it. But he actually says that his scar tattoo is meant to pay respects to his fallen brother, who passed away in a car accident. And Trippy said when he saw the autopsy, his brother face was split open around the eye, leading him to get the same tattoo. Many fans don't buy this story, but it seems like Sos Mula doesn't really care about this anymore because he was actually seen hanging out with Trippy Red in a car not too long after that. As well as the fact that Zillikami also appeared on Trippy Red's Neon Shark album, showing that there's no real animosity between them and Trippy Red anymore. However, there is one other rapper who also got a very similar scar tattoo on his face named Chris Miles, but apparently he got it because he wants to be like Anakin Skywalker and it has nothing to do with the morgue, but who knows. Car Crash. This refers to an unfortunate 
unfortunate accident that took place in 2023 where four of Zillikami's friends unfortunately passed away in a car accident, leading him to a state of depression that he still hasn't been able to escape even to this day. So says the daughter is just that. He actually has a daughter with his former baby mother that he got with before he was ever famous. She's around eight years old, but we don't really know any more information about her, and I'm not really going to look into that because it's none of our business, really. And 6 9 also mentioned at one point that he fucks out Smola's baby mother, but that's probably not true. But once again, who knows? German Dogs is kind of similar to Clean Up Crew, where it's just a throwaway album that Zillikami released in 2019 with two tracks that he never released officially. Sosa's stepfather. So I believe this is completely incorrect because Sosa's parents were both in his life throughout his entire childhood, with his mother moving back to Brazil around the time he turned 18. But despite that, his dad was always in the picture, and I don't see any mention of a stepdad anywhere, so I think this might be wrong. Unless, of course, it's maybe referring to one of his big homies in the gang, but as far as I know, I don't have any information on that. So if you do, let me know. City of God. This is an unreleased, partially leaked mixtape by Sos Mula that fans took it upon themselves to recreate and upload on Dat Piff. However, the original version still hasn't released until this day, and it likely never will. Junebug. This one is pretty simple. It's basically a nickname that Zillikami was given by his mother, referring to the fact that his name is Junius, or just Juju to some, which spawned into the nickname Junebug. Tier 6. Sos Mula's Real Age. Now, a lot of people are going to say I'm doing too much with this one, but this is very fascinating to me. So many people speculate and heavily argue about this topic on the City Morgue subreddit, with Sos himself claiming he was born April 14th, 1994. However, there is a police report that claims that Sos Mula was born in 1988, but fans would actually ask Sos Mula on Instagram, and he would send a picture of his ID, claiming that he was actually born in 1994, so case closed there. However, when looking at it, you can see this ID was actually made in 2016, a year that Sos Mula mostly spent in jail. And even more fascinating, he actually has face tats in this picture, and as you can tell from these Helsing pictures, he never had face tats during the time he was released in 2016. After that, he went to jail, so unless he got jail face tats, how is this possible? And I mean, I guess it's definitely possible, but it's definitely something to think about, and also, why would Sos Mula fake his age? Nobody really knows, but I think the speculation is going to continue until the end of time. Death Cigarettes is a brand of cigarettes from the 90s that Zilla can often be seen smoking in his iconic pictures like these, where he has the bottle with all the smokes in it and the cake as well. Kanye Tweet. Now, this one's a whole lot less impressive than you would initially think, because Zillikami basically just shared a picture of Kim Kardashian skating down some stairs on his Instagram story, and then Kanye screenshotted that and shared it on his Twitter. I mean, cool connection, but I don't know if we're going to see any unreleased Zillikami x Kanye anytime soon. Original Shinner's music video and cover art are both very similar, with both having to be censored after release for gory and drug-related content that goes against YouTube's policy. Basically, in one of the scenes, you can actually see a drug addict completely shooting up with a needle and everything, so they had to censor that later on, but I think you can still find the original on YouTube reposted. There's also a common misconception that the original Shinner's 13 cover art was replaced after release because the broken leg was just too gory. But that seems to be untrue because the original version is still on SoundCloud and the only reason that the other version changed cover arts is because they put it on volume 1 so of course it gets the album cover art instead of the single cover art. Toxin. So I believe this refers to the fact that Zillikami actually has a tattoo on his penis with the spider web above his crotch that you can actually see here but we haven't seen the actual tattoo on his penis although I don't think I'd want to see that. But who knows with the recent Drake leaks it might happen soon. Scud got quail. Now this refers to a band that Zillikami was in during his high school years although we can't find any music or information about this because there was many other bands going by the same name at the same time. And some believe it might have actually just been a cover band but that's not confirmed. Rip Peep. Now this refers to a leaked track by the morgue that many claim is actually about little Pete but it turns out it's actually dedicated to Zillikami's dog Pete who passed away sometime during 2017 to 2018. But you can see why fans are so confused that the lyrics have absolutely nothing to do with little Pete because it has nothing to do with him but it only made the song more infamous. Final tier. Airsoft. So this one's pretty self-explanatory, basically just refers to the fact that Zillikami loves to play airsoft and often does it professionally, and he also has a couple videos on YouTube of him playing it with Brandon Buckingham, as well as several people commenting on my video saying they actually played airsoft with him before in person. So if you live in New York or are visiting for some reason, who knows, maybe you'll actually get to play airsoft with Zillikami. Corey Taylor. Now this refers to the strange connection that Zillikami has with the main singer of the band known as Slipknot. So of course growing up as a metalhead, Zillikami is a huge fan of Slipknot, but it turns out that fan actually goes both ways because one time when Corey Taylor was doing an Ask Me Anything on Reddit, fans asked him who he wanted to collaborate with. And to many fans surprise, he actually said Zillikami, showing that he had an interest in the young up and coming rap group. And then him and Zilla were actually able to meet at a show. And then even better than that, Corey Taylor actually did the intro for Dog Boy. This is Corey Taylor and you're tuning in to Dog Boy Radio. Which was a cool connection for fans of both groups. And finally, we have the X interaction. So this refers to the fact that Zillikami was actually a pretty big fan of X as far back as 2015 even tweeting 
about being happy when he got free. And he can also be seen in a couple of pictures wearing XXX and Tassion merch showing that he was a fan for a long time. And eventually these two got to interact in DMs, although we've never been able to see what the two said to each other because Zillikami has never leaked these DMs. And in my opinion that's not a bad thing because I don't think he needed to clout Chase X after he passed away like many others did. Although this is only going to add more ammunition to the argument that XXX and Tassion is the father of trap metal, so there you go guys. And with that we have the City Morgue Iceberg, or at least this version of the City Morgue Iceberg because I actually have an ultimate one coming very soon but it has a lot more entries and it's going to take a long time to do because it's packed to the absolute brim. But if you guys like this one and you show lots of love and support I'll know that I have to keep working even harder on that one and try to fast track it to get it to you sooner. So if you like it definitely like, comment, do all that stuff. But besides that thank you guys so much for watching. I'm glad I could clear up some misinformation that's going on in the community and if I actually got anything wrong make sure to tell me in the comments below and I'll try to correct it in the next video because I don't want to spread anything wrong. I want to try to do my best but I'm only one person. Constructive criticism is always appreciated because it's helped me grow a lot on this channel so I appreciate all you guys. Even if you completely dislike me I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you and peace out. Okay so after editing the entire video I realized that I forgot to mention So Smula music before City Morgue but basically before So Smula used to be with City Morgue he used to run with a different rap group known as Rider Gang where he made more gang oriented music but after he went to jail a couple times he had a falling out with them and started working with City Morgue. <laughs>